It was grade three at Brookmill Junior Public School when Inns Choi first stepped on a stage. They did Wizard of Oz, and I was a quadling, which is different than a munchkin. Munchkin are little people. Quadlings are people who were in the Emerald City. So I took pride in that, and we did like a folk dance thing or whatever. But that was the first time in the gym here uh, where I got up on stage. But it was watching his father's weekly sermons that planted a seed. My father's a pastor, so I'd watch him preach on Sundays, telling stories on stage. On stage, telling stories um, to a bunch of people in the audience. Funny stories, touching stories, stories that challenge, stories that inspire. That was my first taste of, of acting. And so I wanted to be like my dad. While studying acting, Inns realized this was what he was made to do. But he still had one unresolved issue, his name. And then I went to uh, York University uh, for acting. So then they're doing uh, the attendance, my first, my first day at York. And of course, the official name is Inserp. And uh, you know, they call that Inserp Choi. And I was about to correct them, say, uh, no, it's, it's actually Danny. But then for some reason, it, it, it was, uh, I really loved that name again. It's a common story amongst a lot of immigrant youth, you know, trying to, um, trying to be more normal, <laughs> trying to be more uh, what they, the images of what is Canadian. And then you kind of learn to love your culture and love the differences that it has made in your life. And then I, I think, kind of reclaim it and reclaim both, being Canadian and Korean, and that's, that's who I am. But as he was reclaiming his name, he was also learning more and more about the real world of acting. Not a lot of roles. Not a lot of roles, both in theater and film. And the roles that were there are uh, the kind of stereotypical waiter at the Chinese restaurant, if there's an episode involving an Asian gang in Chinatown, for whatever cop show or whatever, then we'll hire you. Um, or the commercial, you know, the token Asian. You need the token black, the token brown, the token Asian, the token this and that, to kind of fill out the back. But things are changing, yeah. I was living in a, a bachelor apartment that's a quarter the size of this room. It was like, I think I paid like 450 bucks a month, and that's, that's what I could afford. I was working part-time at the church, spending long hours at the 24-hour Tim Hortons, writing, writing away, writing my poetry, writing my plays, dreaming, what, you know, is this ever gonna come to fruition? Is this ever gonna come to fruition? Uh, probably not, but I gotta spend my time somehow, and uh, I, I have these ideas, I have these ideas. Just gotta get on paper. Kim's convenience was one of those ideas Inns had written down on paper inspired by the community and culture around him. Like the story of Koreans immigrating to Canada, specifically Toronto from Korea, finds its uh, anchors in the church and the convenience store as uh, vehicles of, of business, of social life, of uh, a way of bringing their family over, as a way of paying the rent, as a way of learning English, as a way of so it's those two anchors. I can't get better to talking. What? <laughs> I can't catch hearing you mouse speak too fast. Well, Canada's no. a nation of immigrants. And you walk down the streets of Toronto and you see all the nations. My parents came to Canada with $200. Three kids. Crazy. And many, I mean, many different, many people come to Canada with nothing. It's a rags to riches story that a lot of people, you know, everyone, I think everyone loves to see someone go from nothing to kind of something. That's a steal. <laughs> if a fat guy is a black with some brown shoes, that's a no steal. That's a cancer out combo. That is so Racist? Not racist. So I was Applauded no. by critics for bringing a story to a Canadian stage many first and second generation immigrants can relate to. It's a topic Choi knows all too well. 
I think audiences, they, they, they want to have fun. They want to have a great time. I want them to see themselves in it too, because uh, uh, this is a Canadian play, I feel. And it relates to, regardless of your ethnicity, it relates to any Canadian. And suddenly, the name he once was ashamed of is the one theater crowds are talking about, applauding him publicly for his work. I have a vivid memory of that first performance, especially the last moment in the play. And the lights fade down slowly, and I'm on stage, and I didn't hear anything. And it must, it must have been one or two seconds, but it felt like 10, uh, during which time I thought, oh, they hate it. It sucks. Oh, my goodness. Okay. How do I run away? How do I escape this? And then as soon as the lights came up uh, for the curtain call, the whole audience en masse just stood up applauding the play. And just, whoa, uh, it felt like walking into heaven. Why am I so confused? Why do I yearn for more than this world? When I'm on stage, when I'm acting, I feel like God is smiling on me. I feel like he's shining his light on me because it's what he created me to do.